what's going on everybody in my previous video i showed you guys how to set up buttons within touch portal we took a look at all the actions that are available on touch portal in this video we're going to dive deeper into that obs section i'm going to show you how to set up touch portal with obs and then create some basic buttons with obs so you have a better understanding of how to use touch portal when using obs I am creating a full set of beginner tutorials for Touch Portal, so if you want to keep up to date on all those guides, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. If after watching this video you still have any questions, feel free to hop in my Discord server, or if you're just looking for some like-minded individuals to hang out with, hop in that Discord server, hang out, have a good time. We've got some pretty awesome people in that server. With that being said, we're going to jump right into this video. If you've followed along with the beginner tutorials so far, this is what you'll have set up on touch portal you have your main page here and then a second page on the application but before we get to setting up uh, touch portal with obs we actually need to connect touch portal with obs and in order to do that we need to download the websocket plugin for obs the websocket plugin is in the description below make sure you click that link and install that plugin when you click the link in the description below, it will bring you to a page that looks like this. You simply need to scroll all the way down and then install that OBS WebSocket plugin using either the Windows installer or the zip file. I suggest just installing the installer and then running that installer and it will install into OBS for you. After you install this plugin, make sure you restart OBS, otherwise the WebSocket will not be active. After you have the plugin installed successfully, you can now go to the settings tab on the top right and go to the OBS section. You'll notice in the OBS section, you have the WebSocket port. Go ahead and toggle the auto connect button. It'll make it a lot easier when you're trying to connect your touch portal app to the OBS on your desktop. You'll know if the WebSocket plugin is installed successfully. If you go to your tools menu here, you'll see the WebSocket server settings. If you open the WebSocket server settings, you'll notice that you have the options to change the server port here. This port is what is going to connect to touch portal. By default, it should be 4444 and on touch portal, the default should be 4444. If you have connection issues, this is where you need to change those settings in order to to get them to play nicely together. Once you have Touch Portal connected to OBS, we're ready to actually set up some basic buttons for OBS. I'm going to show you how to set up a few basic buttons. The first thing I wanna show you is how to switch from one scene to a different scene. So if we open this button here, and on the left, we wanna scroll down to our OBS actions. In the OBS actions, what we want to create is the action for setting scene. So if you create a set scene action, what we're going to select is our main live streaming scene here or whatever your main scene is. Mine is going to be this live scene display capture. You can import your own button icon if you would like. I'm just going to put DP for display capture here on the button so I know what this button is. And I'm going to go ahead and save the button. Directly to the right of this button, we're going to create the same exact action for setting scene, except for it's going to be a different scene. Go ahead and change the button for this as well. I'm going to put int for intermission so I know what this button is and go ahead and hit save. Now, when you press these buttons, it will switch between these scenes. You can get a little bit more advanced than this and create an on slash off display for whenever one scene is active and the other one is not. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. On this first button here, if we go ahead and click it and we scroll down on the left, what we're looking for is on scene selected event. It will automatically open this in the on event tab. When OBS active scene is this scene, so we're going to make sure this is the display capture. We're also going to create the same exact event statement. So go ahead and create on scene selected again, we're, except for we're going to change it to is not, and then we're going to select the same scene. The next thing we need to do is change the actual button visuals. If we scroll back up to our visual options or visual actions, what we're going to select is the action for change button visuals. What I'm going to change my button visual to is DP except for I'm going to change the text color over to green. 
I want to have the text color as green when the scene is active. So I'm going to make sure that this color change is in when this scene is active. I'm going to copy this action and I'm going to paste it down below, except for I'm going to make sure that I change this color back to white and I'm going to add that in. Now I'll know when this scene is active because the icon or the letters, the text for this button will be green. You'll want to make sure that the default or initial state of the button is off and that the button text is also white for off if you're going to copy these settings. You can apply the same exact logic to actual visual changes like icon changes, so on and so forth, but this is about as basic as it gets. It will help you understand how this works go ahead and save that button. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the intermission scene. So we're going to scroll back down to the event section of OBS and create on scene selected. We're going to make sure this is selected as the intermission scene. We're going to select on scene selected again. We're going to make sure it is not that same scene. And then we're going to create the button visual changes. Again, we're going to change the button visual over to a green color and it's going to say int and we're going to make sure that's in the correct event statement. And then we're going to copy this visual change and we're going to make sure it changes back to white when it is not on this scene. Go ahead and save that button. Now that you have created these two buttons, if you test them out, you'll notice that when you switch the scene, the buttons change from white to green based on the active scene. And that's going to complete this tutorial, guys. I want to thank you so much again for watching this tutorial on setting up Touch Portal with OBS. I hope that you found some sort of value in this video. And if you did learn something from this video, make sure you hit that like button on this video and subscribe to this channel for future Touch Portal guides. If you need any further help with it, setting up anything related to Touch Portal, feel free to hop in my Discord server. The link is in the description below. Also check out Touch Portal's Discord server. That is a great resource for getting help on Touch Portal related issues. I want to thank you so much again for watching this video and I will catch you in my next one. Peace.